Hello, my name is Rick Butler, co-director of the Sports Performance Volleyball Club in Aurora, Illinois. In the video lesson you're about to watch, we're going to take a look at what we call defensive loading, which is preparing to dig the ball prior to the attack. We will take a look at what the feet do before, during, and after ball contact, as well as the positioning of the arms and platform during the same phases. The players you will be watching are members of the Seitoku High School team, which is currently the defending Japanese national champion. I've had the privilege of traveling all over the world over the past 30 plus years of coaching, and there's no place in the world where high school age athletes play defense with the skill, relentlessness, or fighting spirit of the Japanese. Defensive plays that in the States we would consider extraordinary are just ordinary by Japanese standards. I believe there are a couple of reasons for the high level of success of the Japanese defenders. First and foremost, they put in a tremendous number of hours from a very early age in training what we call first contact skills, which are passing the serve and digging versus the attack. They start performing these skills at an early age when hand-eye coordination and motor skills are more easily trained, which allows their reading and anticipation skills to become very elite due to seeing so many different situations so often during training and competition. The second, and probably just as important of a reason, is the technique and mechanics they use to perform defensive skills. Volleyball is what I would call a feet-first sport, and by that I mean that non-stop nature of the ball moving from one player to another requires the initiation of some type of footwork to perform virtually every skill at a high level. Let's first take a look at the footwork and lower leg mechanics prior to ball contact. Here you see the player prior to the ball being contacted in a parallel stance with the feet about medium distance apart. Then, just prior to ball contact, you see the player performing what I call a loading move, which is a slight pre-hop move where the feet are moved slightly wider, but never to the point where the player cannot move quickly in any direction to play the ball that is hit away from midline and requires pursuit. This loading or small pre-hop creates a stretch reflex in the muscles of the lower extremities and allows for much quicker reaction than of a player who is stationary and standing still. You see the same move in an elite level tennis player who performs a similar pre-hop in receiving a tennis serve just as the opposing server is preparing to contact the ball to the racket. Let's take a look and watch how the defender reacts to different balls that are hit directly to her, but also how she reacts to balls that require a quick step or some form of quick pursuit. Even during serve receive, you will notice that the Japanese players are always working to find a stable and balanced base with their feet. The next area we want to look at is the overall body posture and the positioning of the arms, i.e. the platform, prior to, during, and following the execution of the skill. This is the point where the defender must be ready before she ever knows the location or the speed of the oncoming ball. The first thing you will notice is that the arms are in what I would call a coiled and neutral position. By this I mean the defender does not yet have any idea of the location of the oncoming ball. If you were to draw a circle around the defender, you would see that the arms are almost exactly in the middle of that circle, so the defender can reach virtually any position from the midline in the most efficient manner. Also, with the arms in this coil position rather than hanging down between the legs, the defender is able to get to the ball that is attacked laterally outside of midline without having to swing the arms in a circular motion, which usually results in digging the ball sideways rather than back into the court. Once the ball has been attacked, let's look closely at the action of the platform as it contacts the ball. In this video, you will see that the defender keeps the platform still with virtually no movement through the ball on contact. 
For the balls that are attacked with a great deal of velocity, we can see that the platform actually recoils back on contact in an effort to cushion the attack to keep it from exploding off the arms and being dug out of bounds or back over the net to give the opponent a free ball. This cushioning technique that you are watching here is something that the Japanese players do better than anyone in the world. It's literally the ability to take a hard driven ball and turn it into a dig that rebounds off the arms in a controlled manner. This is not unlike the baseball batter who can take a 98 mile an hour fastball and lay down a bunt that only travels a few feet using the same wooden bat that can also propel that same fastball to travel over 400 feet through the air. This concept of cushioning in volleyball is all about what the platform does on the moment of ball contact. Do the arms tighten up and swing towards the ball, causing the ball to propel off the arms? Are they held still so the ball merely rebounds off the platform? Or does the platform actually recoil on ball contact to soften the tempo of the ball as it comes off the platform? I hope you've enjoyed this video lesson. I want to wish all of you the best of luck.